Hey guys, this is Roshni welcoming you again to my channel Circuit Globe. Today's video lecture is on modulation and its types. So without any delay, let's get started. In the field of electronics, modulation is defined as a process or technique by which the properties or characteristics of the carrier signal is changed or varied according to the baseband signal. Now you must be thinking what is a baseband signal. So basically a baseband signal is the information carrying signal which is required to be transmitted from one end to another. While discussing modulation, a more famous name for baseband signal or information signal is modulating signal. The baseband signal after modulation becomes bandpass signal. More simply we can say Modulation is a way of impressing the information on the carrier wave by changing the characteristics of the carrier wave according to the information signal. The three main characteristics which undergo change while modulating a signal are amplitude, frequency and phase. And according to these three particular characteristics which undergo change according to the message signal, modulation is classified. Let's first see why modulation is required. So the first point is modulation reduces the practical size of the antenna which is present at the remote location. Now the question arises how this happens. So basically for the transmission of radio frequency signal the height of the antenna must be a multiple of lambda by 4. We know lambda is given as C by F where C represents the speed of light and F represents the frequency of the signal. So whenever the frequency of signal is increased the wavelength will automatically decrease and this ultimately will decrease the value of lambda by 4 and in this way the practical size of the antenna can be reduced by the process of modulation. Guys according to the second point with the help of modulation transmission distance can be increased. The reason behind this is that when a low frequency signal is transmitted to a long distance then it experiences severe attenuation. But by the help of modulation, when frequency of the signal is increased, then attenuation automatically decreases. Due to this reason, it is said that modulation increases the range of data transmission. The next point says that through modulation, the chances of mixing of various signal while transmission is reduced to a large extent. To understand this, consider that we have various message signals falling in the range between 0 to 20 kHz. As the frequency range of various signals is same here, thus while transmission through a common channel, there are very large chances that the signals while propagating mixes with one another. But by modulating the signal with different carrier frequencies, their separation can be easily achieved at the destination. So we can say that through modulation, multiplexing of signals can be achieved as various signals can be transmitted to longer distances through a common communication channel without much attenuation and mixing. Let's now see how modulation is classified. So on general basis, modulation is classified as continuous wave modulation and pulse wave modulation. This continuous wave modulation is further classified as amplitude modulation and angle modulation. And angle modulation is again classified into two categories that is frequency modulation and phase modulation. In continuous wave modulation, both carrier wave and the message signal are in the form of analog signal. Now coming to the pulse modulation. Pulse modulation is mainly classified into two categories. First is analog modulation while the second is digital modulation. Analog modulation is further classified as PAM that is pulse amplitude modulation, PWM that is pulse width modulation and PPM that is pulse position modulation. This digital modulation is classified as ASK FSK and PSK. Guys, ASK stands for Amplitude Shift King, FSK stands for Frequency Shift King and PSK stands for Phase Shift King. In this video lecture, we will discuss each modulation type in brief separately. So let's start. Let's first see what is continuous wave modulation. Let's understand the first type that is amplitude modulation. So guys, this is our modulating signal. This is our carrier signal and this is our amplitude modulated signal. Amplitude modulation is defined as the type of modulation in which the amplitude of the carrier signal 
is varied according to the amplitude of modulating signal or message signal so guys what happens here is this carrier signal is superimposed on this message signal on superimposing the carrier signal amplitude varies with the amplitude of modulating signal like it is shown here the amplitude varies in this way keeping the frequency and phase of the signal constant so as we can see that this carrier signal is varied according to this modulating signal and hence in this way this amplitude modulated signal is achieved next coming to frequency modulation so for frequency modulation this is the modulating signal this is the carrier signal and this is our frequency modulated waveform in frequency modulation what happens is the frequency of this carrier signal is varied according to the amplitude of the modulating signal this means when amplitude increases frequency also increases and when amplitude decreases frequency also shows decrease however unlike previous case here the amplitude remains constant and only the frequency of the signal shows variation now let's understand the last type of continuous wave modulation that is phase modulation for phase modulation this is our modulating signal this is the carrier signal and this is the modulated signal phase modulation somewhat resembles to frequency modulation because here also with the increase in the amplitude of method signal an increase in frequency is noticed the reason behind this is that with the increase in the amplitude of message signal the carrier undergoes compression and this leads to provide phased lead but with decreasing modulating signal the carrier is stretched which is shown here and this stretching of carrier corresponds to phase lag and in this way a phase modulated signal is achieved let's now proceed towards pulse modulation so the first type of pulse modulation is analog pulse modulation let's first see pulse amplitude modulation so for pulse amplitude modulation this is our analog modulating signal this is our carrier signal which is in the form of pulses and this is our finally modulated signal similar to continuous wave amplitude modulation here also the amplitude of this carrier signal changes according to the amplitude of this modulating signal like as the amplitude of modulating signal increases the amplitude of carrier signal also gets increased but with the decrease in the amplitude of message signal there will be a decrease in the amplitude of the carrier signal and in this way this modulated signal is achieved now coming to pwm that is pulse width modulation for pulse width modulation this is our modulating signal this is our carrier signal and this is the modulated signal as the name indicates in pulse width modulation the width of the pulsed carrier signal is varied according to the amplitude of the message signal however you must keep in mind that the amplitude remains constant even when the width shows variation so basically what happens here is when the amplitude increases the width of the carrier signal increases and due to this reason this pulse is wider than the previous one due to the fact that this particular amplitude is more than this value in a similar way when we proceed further as the amplitude of the message signal decreases the width of the pulse is also decreases and we get this kind of modulated signal Let's now proceed towards pulse position modulation abbreviated as PPM. So here this is our modulating signal, this is the carrier signal and this is the modulated signal. A PPM signal is basically achieved from a PWM signal because here this PPM signal is generated by taking PWM signal as the reference. This is so because the trailing edge of PWM signal that is this acts as the rising point of the pulses of ppm signal this simply indicates that at each trailing edge a pulse of ppm signal with same width and amplitude of the carrier signal is started in this way a ppm signal is achieved now let's see the second type of pulse modulation that is digital modulation in digital modulation the message signal is in the form of pulses so let's see the first type of digital pulse modulation that is ask which stands for amplitude shift keying so here this is our modulating signal in the form of pulses this is our carrier signal which is analog in nature 
and this is the finally modulated signal. In ASK, the amplitude of analog carrier signal is changed according to the pulsed modulating signal. Now let's see how this happens. So it is clearly shown in the figure that the signal is present only when the digital stream is 1 or high. This means that for this particular case when the digital pulse is high, signal is present over here. But as the digital stream becomes low or zero, then no signal is present at this particular place. Moving further, when again it goes high, signal is again present over here. And in this way the cycle continues. It is sometimes also known as on off keying. Let's now have a look at FSK, that is frequency shift keying. So this is our modulating signal, this is our carrier signal of analog nature and this is the finally modulated signal. In frequency shift keying, the frequency of the carrier signal is changed according to the amplitude of modulating signal. So what happens here is, when the amplitude of the modulating signal is high or 1, then the frequency of the carrier signal will be more. But as the amplitude of modulating signal becomes low or 0, then the frequency also becomes low. And in this way, frequency shift keying is achieved. Lastly, coming to PSK, that is phase shift keying. So in phase shift keying, the phase of the carrier signal is changed according to the amplitude of modulating signal. So basically, the process is such that when the bit sequence changes from 0 to 1, then positive phase change occurs. But when the bit sequence changes from 1 to 0, then there is a negative change of phase. So in this way, the amplitude, frequency and phase of a continuous wave carrier signal is changed according to the digital message signal in digital pulse modulation. Well guys, this is all for today. I hope this lesson will help you to understand modulation in a better way. So please like and share this video and also don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates. We'll be back soon with another useful tutorial. Till then, take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.